Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about how to predict the products of double displacement reactions. Now if you haven't yet seen the video on double displacement reactions, please watch that one first and then come back to this video after. I'll put a link in the description box below for the video on double displacement reactions. So we have one learning goal for today, to predict the products of double displacement reactions using the solubility table. So what is a double displacement reaction? Well, just a review from that other video. It's when a cation in an ionic compound displaces or replaces a cation in another ionic compound to produce two new compounds, and one of them has to be a solid. And we call, when we have two aqueous solutions or two, solu two aqueous solutions that mix together and produce a solid, we call that solid a precipitate. So you're having one ionic compound that's aqueous, another ionic compound that's aqueous, and the cation from each one is swapping places so they each have a new anion attached, so you have two new compounds, and one of those compounds is a solid, the other one remains aqueous. So for an example here, you have barium chloride, which is aqueous, and sodium sulfate, which is aqueous. And then the sodium and the barium swap places so that the sodium is now with the chlorine, and that's an aqueous compound, sodium chloride. And the barium is with the sulfate. Barium sulfate is a precipitate because it's a solid, it's not aqueous. So we have a double displacement reaction. So key point here, the reaction only occurs if an insoluble product, so a solid, a precipitate, is formed. If a soluble product is not formed, then you do not have a double displacement reaction. The reaction does not occur. So here's an example. We have silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Both of these are aqueous, which means that in solution, so in water, the silver and the nitrate are sort of separated from each other as ions, and the sodium and chlorine are separated from each other as ions, so all four of those ions move independently of each other. When they react together, the sodium and the nitrate remain as independent ions, but since silver chloride forms a precipitate, the silver and the chloride ions actually come together. They form silver chloride, which is a solid, and it stays together as a compound. So those ions are not separate in solution, they're together as a compound. So here are some rules for how we figure out when something is solid or whether something is aqueous. Now this is one way of looking at it, just looking at the guidelines. The way most people look at these rules is in a chart form. So it indicates, for example, for each of the different anions, which cations will form a soluble, uh, com or soluble compound, which ones will be soluble, and which ones will be insoluble and form a precipitate. So you'll look at each of these and determine whether a reaction will occur or not based on whether something solid is produced. So how do we predict double displacement reactions? Well, first of all, you need to identify the cations that will swap places so we know which two new compounds are going to be formed. And then you're going to predict the products of those compounds based on using the crossing over or the zero sum rules so that you know what those two new compounds will be. And then you're going to locate those new compounds on the solubility table to verify that at least one, well, that one of them will be a solid and that the other one is aqueous. So if you don't have a solid compound, if both of them are aqueous, then you have no reaction. And you'll write no reaction or NR um, at the other side of the arrow. You won't write the compounds because the reaction doesn't occur, so you just write no reaction. So let's take a look at an example here. We have potassium sulfate reacting with calcium chloride. So first of all, we'll start off with the potassium, um, and it's going to swap places with the calcium because both of those are the cations. So the potassium is now going to join with the new anion chloride. So we're going to look in our table at row number three for the chlorides. And if we look at the rules, there's a number of different cations that will have low solubility. Potassium is not listed there. And then it says all others, which potassium would be included with, and it says it's soluble. So potassium chloride 
will be soluble, so we'll write aqueous there. And then now the calcium will join up with the sulfate, that will be our other new compound. So we'll look at the column of sulfate, and we see that calcium is listed as low solubility. Low solubility means that it'll form a precipitate. So we have calcium sulfate, and that will form a solid. Now for each of these compounds, I use the crossing over rule to determine what the formula would be. And in each case, there's one of each of those different elements in the compound, so there were no subscripts written. Now if we'd like to balance the equation, we have two potassium on the left, one on the right, so we'll write a coefficient two. There are two that affected the cal or sorry, the chlorine, so there are now two chlorine, two chlorine on the left one calcium, one calcium, one sulfate, one sulfate, so we're all balanced out. Let's take a look at another example. We have barium nitrate, an aqueous compound that reacts with sodium carbonate, another aqueous compound. So if we look to see, the barium and the sodium are the two cations that will swap places. So sodium will now be combined with the nitrate. So if we look on our chart under the nitrate section, here it says that most cations combined with nitrate are going to be soluble. So our sodium nitrate will be aqueous. And I use the crossing over rule there to determine there's one of each of those ions to form uh, that compound so no subscripts are written. And then we have the barium and the carbonate that come together. So we look under the carbonate section and it says there are a few of them that are soluble but almost all the others have low solubility which means they're going to form a, a precipitate. So I'm just going to write it down here because I'm running out of space. So we have our barium carbonate and this will be a solid. So now if we'd like to balance this equation, we have one barium, one barium, we have two nitrates, two here will give us two nitrates, that affected the sodium, two sodiums, two sodiums, one carbonate, one carbonate, so we're all balanced out. So that's how we would solve this type of problem. Let's take a look at one more. Here we have iron chloride, and this looks like iron 3 chloride, and we have sodium bromide. And these are both aqueous and they're going to react together. Well, if we take a look at our chart, chlorides and bromides come together in the same section, so category 3 there. And with the exception of a few cations that form insoluble products or precipitates, almost everything else is soluble, which means even though iron is with chlorine now and it's soluble, when iron goes with bromine, it's still going to be soluble because it follows those same guidelines. Same with the sodium, it's now with bromine. When it switches and works with the chlorine, it's still going to be soluble because it f uh, follows those same guidelines in terms of solubility. So in both cases, the iron 3 bromide and the sodium chloride are going to be aqueous. Since they're both aqueous, then there is no reaction, so you write NR or write out the full words, no reaction. So that's how you would solve a problem like this. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you predict the products of double displacement reactions using the solubility table? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.